Hello everyone and thank you for joining me today to learn about Nerdio for Azure. My name is Vadim Vladimirsky and I am the founder and CEO of Nerdio. I know how much everyone loves slides, uh, so we're not going to spend too much time on the slides. Uh, we'll go through some of the background on, on what Nerdio for Azure is all about. Uh, and then we'll spend the rest of our time together looking at the product uh, and, and doing a hands-on technical demo. All right, so what is Nerdio for Azure? Nerdio for Azure is an automation platform that's been designed specifically for managed services providers and hosters and helps them build and grow an IT practice in Azure. A bit of a background on the company. We started out as an MSP about 13 years ago and we created what back then was a fairly unique offering which was a complete IT in the cloud practice where all of our customers were, were running their entire IT system including servers and desktops in the cloud. We've onboarded literally hundreds of customers around the world. We were an early SPLA partner of Microsoft and as the years went on, we've created a lot of technology to make ourselves as a service provider more efficient and cost effective. And then a few years ago, we decided, hey, why don't we take all of this technology we created internally, put it together into a platform and make it available to other service providers to be able to build a similar practice of putting entire IT systems in the cloud. We went ahead and did that, called that platform Nerdio, and deployed it on top of our private cloud, which is a VMware stack. Uh, and as we went to market and started to talk to other service providers, everyone loved the automation and the simplicity of the product, but the comment we kept hearing was, I don't want to put customers in the private data center, I really want them to go into Azure. Uh, and that was the impetus for us to port that product and, and create a version of Nerdio specifically for Azure. Fast forward to today, we are a gold Microsoft partner with competencies in, in cloud and uh, productivity solutions in ISV. We are also a, a listed in the Microsoft One Commercial Partner Catalog. We are an IP COSEL ready solution and, and available through the Azure Marketplace and AppSource. So what problem does Nerdio set out to solve for MSPs? You know, as, as we've, we've been talking to many MSPs over the years, some of the primary challenges we hear about around moving customers into Azure fall into three main categories. The first of which is that it's perceived to be expensive. MSPs feel that an unoptimized IT environment running in Azure as compared to doing it either on-prem or, or in a colo facility is more expensive, which is you know, certainly true. If you move it uh, you know, as is into Azure, it, it, it can tend to be more expensive, sometimes by a lot. And there's also the need for fairly expensive and highly skilled engineers in order to onboard and manage customers in Azure. The second challenge is the complexity. Uh, Azure is perceived to be a complex solution, both from a technical perspective, there are just so many components and they're so quickly evolving that it's difficult to keep up. So you need you know, a significant amount of skill in order to architect a solution on top of Azure. It's also you know, initially was designed more for DevOps than IT administration. So some of the things that, that IT administrators need are not as intuitive as they could be. And then on the other dimension of pricing, Azure being a consumption-based billing model um, is something that is difficult to build an MSP offering on top of because it's difficult to, difficult to budget uh, what the cost and the spend is going to be precisely. And then the final category that we hear often about is the risks perceived in, in moving customer workloads into Azure. Uh, customers expect fixed pricing from their service providers in many cases. And because Azure is a consumption-based model, it's difficult to meet those expectations without taking a lot of risk on that, that could make a service provider you know, lose their shirt, so to speak, uh, if, if they price something inappropriately and then it costs them more than, than they're charging the customer. Uh, it's also risky because those in-house Azure experts that are needed in order to onboard and, and maintain the customers are difficult to attract and retain. Uh, so if, uh, if an Azure expert that onboarded a handful of customers walks out of the door, the MSP runs a risk of not being able to effectively support those customers going forward. 
So this is where Nerdio for Azure comes in. The goal of the product is to simplify and accelerate the transition of customers' IT environments into Azure and, and simplify the management. And it does that in, in four primary ways. The first of which is the help that it, it provides MSPs in packaging and pricing IT solutions based on Azure. We have both technology in the product in the form of a total cost estimator that asks a handful of business level questions, designs an environment and provides pricing that looks more like per user per month pricing with fairly high degree of accuracy rather than consumption based pricing. So it helps MSPs to build offers on top of Azure and take them to their customers. The second component, and, and really a very important one, is the provisioning engine and provisioning technology that's built into the product. You know, a typical IT environment, to stand up at an IT environment end-to-end -end running in Azure would take an experienced engineer, you know, two to three weeks of full-time work, building all the components and integrating them together. Uh, what we've been able to do through standardizations and templates and automation is to reduce the time required to deploy an IT environment from this two to three weeks of full-time work, of engineering work, down to two hours of elapsed time without any involvement of an engineer. And, and you'll see in a few minutes exactly what that looks like. The third component is the single pane of glass management portal that allows our partners to manage their customers' IT environments all from one place in a multi-tenanted management platform across all of the IT functionality that an end customer would utilize. Everything from users and groups and servers and networking, VPNs, backup DR, you know, really all aspects of the IT environment can be managed from a single place across all customers. And finally, to address the challenge that Azure is perceived to be more expensive, we've created some very unique and powerful optimization technology that uses the standardization and auto scaling to be able to properly size the IT environment in a dynamic manner in response to expected user demand which leads to lower cost to the service provider and then obviously higher margin opportunity for you know for the service provider you know so now we kind of have the idea of what nerdio for azure is the obvious question is well when can it be used or how, how is it used for customers and what i like to do is to talk about these four common use cases that we see of the nerdio for azure product you know, they're slightly different, and we'll go through some of these examples hands-on in, in just a few minutes. Uh, the first one we call IT as a service. It is typically used by small and mid-sized business customers. And, and the concept here is you take the entire IT infrastructure from on-prem and migrate it into Azure and Office 365, completely eliminate the need for any local IT infrastructure, and the migration methodology is typically a lift and shift, and, and it's uh, usually a kind of a cutover migration that's done. For the enterprise, a very common use case is the ability to take an existing RDS deployment that's generally you know, difficult and expensive to maintain on-prem, be able to extend it into Azure, and then move workloads and users into that Azure environment, allowing those workloads to be placed closer to the users given Azure's global footprint. The goal here is to either replace or augment an existing RDS deployment in Azure, and it typically involves a phase-in approach where users are moved into this environment in, in phases and, and groups. The third scenario uh, we refer to as desktop as a service. You know, the, the use case here is, you know, imagine you have a company that's opening a remote office and doesn't want to purchase local desktops or maybe doesn't have you know, feed on the street to be able to service a local IT environment or maybe a call center type environment where a company wants to spin up an Azure environment, place a bunch of desktops in there, tie that back into an existing corporate data center for all of the data and application access and, and have a centrally managed desktop as a service environment. And then finally, the line of business service use case, server use case is one where there are no desktops involved at all. And this is generally done by extending an existing environment from a networking and, and directory perspective into Azure 
and allowing for an easy way to migrate VMs from either on-prem, another cloud, or a data center into the Azure-based environment while keeping all of the existing Active Directory and, and, and other applications intact. And then being able to manage those server workloads, auto-scale them, back them up, and, and do DR on them. So those are the four most common use cases that we see for Nerdy of Azure. So we mentioned this first use case was IT as a service. I, I like to use it as an example because it's the most sort of complete and comprehensive use case, whereas the other ones are sort of a subset of uh, IT as a service. So just to illustrate where Nerdio fits into the IT stack, if you think about a typical IT environment, there are at least these five components. You have your desktops, which is the, you know, the environment in which the end user interacts with the system, with applications and data. There is a server environment for Active Directory and files and printers and line of business applications and databases, etc. There is messaging and collaboration in the form of Office 365. There is security components, things like antivirus, content filtering, encryption, patching and, and updates, things like that. And finally, there should always be a good backup and disaster recovery component built into any IT system. These are you know, Microsoft provided standard you know, best of breed technologies. And many service providers layer last mile services on top of those technologies in the form of ongoing support, maybe proactive monitoring, migration services, IT strategy consulting, maybe line of business application development or support, etc. It you know, could be a mix of, of many other services. Where Nerdio fits in is sort of in between these two. And, and what Nerdio is, is a software management layer that bundles together the off-the-shelf technology components provided by Microsoft deploys them and manages them as a unit and automates the provisioning management and cost optimizing them while running in Azure. So that's where Nerdio fits in. Now we talked about auto provisioning. So I'm going to put this up on the screen just briefly. We're going to dig into this a little bit more in, in a couple of minutes. But this is what a typical environment would start out as, right? So this would come out of the box after provisioning a new customer within the Nerdio for Azure portal. It would be a complete environment with all the networking in the form of a LAN and the DMZ with the necessary network security groups established between them. There would be a, a Active Directory deployment with all the best practice group policies, DNS, DHCP, file server with file shares and, and security permissions set up. There will be an RDS deployment, a VDI deployment based on, on a golden image, as well as Azure recovery services for backup and DR. And then also Office 365 integration with single sign-on using ADFS technology. So that's what a typical environment looks like. And then it can be obviously customized you know, completely uh, to, to the needs of a particular customer. So that's all I have for the slides. Uh, now let's actually dig into the demo and see uh, and see what all this looks like. All right, excellent. So what we're looking at here is what a partner, an MSP, would see when they log into the Nerdio admin portal, or NAP for short. They would see a list of all of their customers on this screen with some high-level information, such as you know what Azure region this environment is provisioned in, whether Azure hybrid usage benefit is, is enabled or not, whether backup is enabled or not, information about the tenant for Office 365 and Azure, subscription ID, etc. You get the idea. Uh, it also maintains some health information and being able to access all the resources that Nerdio is controlling. And then you can dig into each one of these accounts and actually manage them as an IT administrator would and also have the ability to delegate administration down to the end customer if, uh, if needed. So first thing we will do is take a look at what it looks like to create a new customer in this environment. So we're going to click on Add NFA Account. And there are three things you have to do here. Step number one is you have to connect it to an existing Azure subscription. Uh, Nerdio does not you know, resell or provide uh, either Azure or Office 365 or RDS licensing. That is something that our partners bring to the table when deploying customers. So you would create that subscription typically under your CSP partner center, 
Come in here, click Connect to Azure, type in the, the login credentials for the subscription, allow the application access into it. Then you would select the region into which this would be deployed. It can, it can be any of the Azure regions. Then you would get to optionally give the resource group into which everything will be deployed a name. Select whether Azure Hybrid Usage Benefit is enabled. It will validate that there are sufficient core quotas inside of that subscription to allow for this to be provisioned. And that's all you have to do to connect it to Azure. Second step is connecting into Office 365. Most customers already have Office 365 deployed. So this could be either an existing or a brand new Office 365 subscription. Same concept here. You click on connect, you type in the credentials, allow the applications to, uh, application to authenticate, and it gets plugged into the Office 365 account. And finally, step number three is giving this company a name just to identify it in the list and clicking save. Once you click save, this account goes into provisioning. It will appear on the screen with the status of provisioning. And about two hours later, that environment that we looked at that looks like this is going to be ready to go where you can start adding users, installing applications, moving data, and your environment can, can be used you know, literally within hours running out of an Azure region. So let's take a look at what a previously provisioned account looks like. Obviously a demo account here called Moreheart Inc. Account ID 5009. We are going to click on the login button. And what you see here is that the context of our administration has changed. Instead of looking at the partner view or the reseller view where you see multiple customers, here you see the IT admin view. You can see that we're now part of Moreheart Inc, account ID 5009. And along the side here are all the typical IT management functionality. Uh, we, we certainly will not have time to look at everything or, or even a significant portion of it, but I'll, I'll show you some highlights uh, to get the idea across of, of how automated and powerful this tool is. So the first place I want to start is maybe with server management. So, you know, imagine you have a handful of servers that have been migrated or have been provisioned inside of the environment. If we go into the server module, you will see that, uh, you know, the servers are listed here and you can very quickly and easily make modifications to the configuration. So for instance, if we have this domain controller, it's currently a, a B2S instance, we wanna resize it. We can click here, select the appropriate instance based on what's available in the region. It gives you some guidance as to what the appropriate you know, choice may be in a particular use case, click confirm, and this will automatically resize the VM. Similar thing can be done with disks. For example, if there's a file server here that has a P10, which is 128 gigabyte SSD that's running out of space, you can simply click on this disk, select the size larger, you know, something like a P15, P20 or so. Leaving this checkbox checked and clicking OK will not only grow the virtual disk in Azure, but it's also going to grow the, the volume inside of the Windows operating system so you don't even have to log into the VM to extend the partition. You can also change from SSD to a hard disk. You can also see that you know when there is a burstable instances there's this concept of credits that can be banked. Uh, if you mouse over this information it will tell you you know how many credits have been banked and, and how many hours does that translate into of 100% utilization. So really handy information to show you that right off of this screen. If you wanted to add a new server, really simple and easy. You click add server, give it a name, select an operating system. You know, these are the five most common ones we see. Select the disk type, either premium SSD or standard spinning media. Select the right instance size based on, on what's available. For example, the G series doesn't happen, happens to not be in this region. You can select any other instance, uh, assuming there's sufficient core quota in the subscription, click OK. This will provision the VM, place it on the proper network, and even join it to the domain. So within a few minutes, you can just click on generate RDP file, log into the server, and uh, be able to install applications. Some other really neat things is auto scaling on a server by server basis. This is one of three auto scaling mechanisms we have built into the product. So let's imagine you have an application server that requires to be available during business hours. 
and uh, maybe it doesn't need to be available during off hours or maybe it needs to be available but it doesn't need to be sized with as many cores or, or as many gigs of RAM as it does during business hours. So all you do is you come in here, go into auto scale. You can then define the work hours. So let's say, you know, Monday through Friday, uh, let's say 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, and then you get to select well what happens with the server outside of those hours. You can you can either select it as as you know no change, don't do anything with the server. You can have it be powered off. So at at five you know five oh one the server will shut down, and then just before nine a.m. it will be powered back on. Or what's really cool is you can resize the server to any other instant size. For example, you know if it's already an A series, you can resize it to you know a four core or a smaller VM. Um, and you know, obviously during off hours you want it to be smaller. In this case, it's only single core, so it can't really go any smaller than that. But you can select the off hour size and preset the, the during business hour size, and it will automatically do that for you on the schedule that you select. It's a really, really handy functionality here. Other things you can do from the server management, obviously do things like stop, start, and restart the server, add additional storage to a server, so I can easily add a disk of any size and allow it to automatically partition it in Windows. You can manage networking and IP addresses right from here. You can change what LAN or DMZ subnet it resides on and change the IP address and all the kinds of server management functionality that, that you would anticipate. So that's a bit of server functionality. Now let's take a look at what user management looks like. So I'm gonna go into users and I'm going to be presented with, a, with what looks like a regular user list. But if you look closely, this is really a list that brings information from multiple different systems together in one place. So for instance, you can see what the Office 365 licensing that's assigned to a user happens to be. You can see their Exchange Online email address. You can see their Active Directory uh, username group membership you can quickly see what type of desktop they have or they may not have any desktops or virtual desktops assigned to them so in this case this is an rds user assigned to this particular collection which consists of session hosts that have two cores and four gigs of ram and are burstable you can see the last time the user logged into the system and you can quickly enable and disable that login and there's a whole set of actions that you can perform on a user and their desktop everything very handy right at the fingertips right here so let's go through a scenario of what it looks like to add a new employee imagine you have a new employee starting with the company so in the normal environment you would have to add them to active directory sync that over to office 365 assign a license configure the email aliases give them a desktop install office configure backup activate office set up outlook the list goes on and on and on Let's see what this looks like in the Nerdio environment. So we're going to click on Add User. We are going to type in the first name and last name, email address. We are going to add additional email aliases that can be added right here. So we're just going to click on Add John in there. If we type in a phone number in this screen, it is actually going to enable two-factor authentication on the desktop login. So when the user logs into the desktop, they'll get a text message at this phone number, which they'll need to type in to proceed. The next section is the Office 365 section. It automatically will know what licenses are available in this customer's Office 365 account. And if you mouse over a particular license, it will tell you how many are purchased and how many are assigned. And in this case, we have one available E3 license. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And then in here, you have the ability to delegate access down to the end customer's user. So for instance, you can say allow user to log into NAP and select their level of access. There are two options available. One is an account IT administrator, which means somebody will have access to everything that you see in this screen. So the entire portal with all of these options. The other option is the account tier one support, which will give them access to users, groups, shared mailboxes, but nothing servers or below. Uh, you know, meaning this, this would be someone managing users and passwords and groups, etc., but shouldn't be managing servers and networking and, and backup and, and things like that. 
So if, if you want it, you could also grant this user domain admin rights, you know, highly not recommended as a regular practice, but occasionally that is necessary. So that's something that you can do from this screen easily right here with just a checkbox. The next section is the desktop. You can select to give the user no desktop at all, or you can give them an RDS desktop, meaning they will be sharing either a session host or a collection of session hosts with other users. Or you can give them a VDI desktop, which is a dedicated VM instance running in Azure. And you can select it to be any size, anything from a single core all the way up to you know, 64 cores. What you'll notice here is that there are some recommendations at the top, including GPU compatible instances for highly graphical workloads. And you'll also notice that some of these are grayed out and can't be selected. If I mouse over, it will tell me why. For example, this one says 32 cores are needed, but only 20 are available in the subscription. And you'll see this throughout Nerdio. There's lots of what we call guardrails built in to kind of impose some of the Azure best practices around managing an environment. So, you know, you, you can select an instance that's bigger than the number of cores you have only to have Azure error out when you try to make the change. So just kind of trying to protect the administrator from making a mistake. So let's say in this case, John is going to be a light uh, user. So we're going to assign him to a particular RDS session host or an RDS collection. Let's say this is the collection for, for the accounting department. And if John is joining the accounting department, we may already have a predefined accounting user template, or we may have a user in the accounting department who has similar level of access. So we're going to start having accounting. We can see we have Angie accounting, click on that. We can see this automatically pre-populated all the security group membership. We can add John to additional groups, remove them from some of these other groups. Then we can look at some of these extended attributes, usually hidden by default, but things like the login script, the X500 email address, can hide the user from the, from the gal, etc. So lots of additional information that, that you can edit here when you're adding a user. And then the final step, you can optionally send an email to the user's personal email address, which will look something like this. And this email can be, or, or all aspects of Nerdio can be white labeled. So the logo and the names and the contact information at the bottom can be very easily replaced with our white label functionality. But the user will get a welcome email that's gonna have their desktop and server information as well as their username and password, but it will also have an attached RDP file if they do have a virtual desktop assigned to them. So all they have to do is double click on that file. It's SSL signed, so there will be no unknown publisher uh, warnings or anything like that. Type in the password that, that they will be provided and they will be in the desktop within two or three minutes of me clicking the save button and the user being added. So you can see that you know, with just a few clicks and, and two or three minutes of, of elapsed time, we've added the user into all of the underlying systems. We have them in Active Directory. We have RDS configured or VDI. They, when they log in, all the Office products will be automatically activated. Backup will be automatically set up on their desktop, etc. So, so really powerful in terms of automation. Now, if you want to see what the end user experience looks like, let's let's take a look at that. Let's take this user Sally Sales as an example. And if we want to log in a Sally, we can we can either do so with an RDP file or we can log in with HTML through a web browser. So I'm going to show you what it looks like to log in with an RDP file. So you simply click on generate RDP file. Here you get a, cha a choice to configure what settings are available to, to the user. So for instance, do you want to redirect local printers? Do you want to redirect local drives or not? You can then choose to either publish the entire desktop or just a remote app that may be installed on the desktop or on the collection. If you click here, it will enumerate all the apps and give you the option to select one. And then you get the choice of either downloading the file right here and now or emailing it to the user or yourself or whoever, or even multiple people if you wanted to. So for this example, we're just gonna download the file, click confirm, see your file get downloaded on the bottom. We're gonna go in here and you can see I got no unknown publisher warnings. Everything is pre-configured. The file has the user's desktop information and remote desktop gateway built in. It has their username built in and assuming I remember the password, we should be able to be in the desktop in a matter of just a few seconds. 
So this user doesn't have a phone number specified, so the two-factor did not uh, take effect. And now we are logged into our virtual desktop. You can see at the top, logged in as Sally Sales. If we open up any of the Office products, you'll notice that they will get automatically activated. So you can see Sally is logged in. If we look at you know, all of the various settings because of single sign-on, OneDrive is automatically configured, SharePoint is automatically configured, and all of that happened without any user intervention. And obviously this is just a regular desktop that could be sized and you know in any way that's appropriate for a particular customer so let's go ahead and log off and come back to the screen okay so this is what it looks like from an end user perspective from an IT administrator perspective, there's lots of powerful functionality here. For instance, if you have an, an employee that leaves the organization, let's say Sally Sales gives her notice and is going to be leaving. So normally you would have to determine who gets Sally's files, who gets the old email, who gets the new email, what happens to the desktop, what happens to the documents content, etc. Here's what it looks like in Nerdio. You come down here under Sally Sales, select Archive User. Type in the name of Sally's manager, let's call him Andy in this case. Check this box and click Confirm. What this will do automatically is it will go into Office 365 and convert Sally's mailbox to a shared mailbox to free up an Office 365 license. It will then assign that mailbox to Andy, her manager, and it will automatically pop up in Andy's Outlook uh, without any intervention. It will then take the contents of Sally's desktop and documents from her desktop and move them into a folder on the server and drop a shortcut to those files on Andy's desktop. It will assign Andy as the manager of Sally's uh, OneDrive files in SharePoint. And all of that will happen again in a couple of minutes after clicking confirm with an email going out to Andy telling him that he's been assigned all of Sally's data. Sally's account will get disabled, the desktop will get shut, uh, shut down, and the process will be complete. Again, in contrast in having to do that manually, which is error prone and time consuming. Some of the other things you can do here is you can obviously reset passwords. You can reset a particular user's RDS session. This comes in really handy, if, especially if you have a large RDS collection, you know, and you don't know exactly which host the user happens to be on, or you don't want to log into the Windows environment to look at RDS directly. You don't have to go into Windows. You can simply come in here, select reset RDS session. This will automatically find the user session, wherever it may be running and we'll terminate it so the user can log in uh, if something got hung up. Another useful feature is this revert profile feature. This will allow you to recover the Windows profile from a shadow copy snapshot available on the user's desktop. This will provide a list of all the available shadow copies. You select, uh, select one and click confirm and that will recover that, snap, that profile back up the current one so it's still available if needed, reboot the machine if necessary, if it's a VDI machine, for instance, and allow the user to log in using an older version uh, of, a, of a profile from a backup so you don't have to, to blow away and recreate user profiles if there's some corruption. You can also forward the user's email from right here to a manager or to a distribution list. You can do things like monitor someone's email, which, which will assign, you know, read and full access permission to their mailbox for another user. Lots of additional functionality, you know, you can monitor the performance of a particular user. You can replace a user. If somebody's coming in and taking their place, you can just specify first name, last name, email address, and mobile phone number. And this will automatically transfer all of the data and all of the settings from the existing user to this new user. So really powerful automation. Similar things under groups and shared mailboxes. You can manage those very easily. You can uh, you know, add a new group. You can specify whether that's a distribution list or a security group. If it's a distribution list, you can add email address and aliases. You can quickly add users into the group or actually add other groups into the group, etc. So there's just a lot of additional functionality. You can decide if you want to have that group be visible in the global address list or not. Similar thing under shared mailboxes, if you add a shared mailbox, you can select what email address it will have and who the members are. So you can add you know, users with Exchange Online licenses and then this shared mailbox will automatically appear in their Outlook. Let's take a look at network management. So under network management, there are a few 
components. One of them is, is VPN. So Nerdio uh, Admin Portal automates the configuration and management of VPN connections, making it really simple. And as you probably have noticed, we, you know, we have this three-click management philosophy where everything you do within the per portal uh, should be three clicks or less. That, that provides obviously a lot of simplicity, but if there are some instances where you cannot perform a specific advanced you know, action within the portal, you always have the native management tools such as the Azure Admin Portal and Office 365 and AD and all of the Windows tools still available and Nerdio will pick up on those changes and integrate them in here so you won't break anything by, you know, by making some of these changes in the uh, native portals. So from a VPN perspective, you come in here, you turn this on. By doing that, it will automatically configure the VPN gateway. It will configure the gateway subnet as necessary and give you the ability to add new VPN connections. When you add a connection, again, really straightforward, give it a name, give it the, the peer IP address, and then the destination uh, network IP and subnet. After you do that, it's going to set up the VPN connection based on Azure best practices and give you a pop-up that's going to contain the information you need to plug into the firewall on the other end in order for the VPN tunnel to come up. So we'll see that in just a few seconds. We're going to click on uh, view settings right over here. And here you can see the information you need to type into the firewall on the other end. Once this is typed in, this connection will turn from connecting to connected and, and you have a VPN ready to go. So again, really easy setting up VPN connections. You can manage firewall rules as another example. You know, this uses the native Azure uh, network security groups for uh, stateful packet uh, inspection. It's configured out of the box with uh, two subnets. One is a DMZ that has some publicly facing servers such as the RD gateway and the ADFS proxy server and some, and, and then the LAN that has the, the other servers. You can very easily come in here, see what rules are, are already in place and then add a new firewall rule that will allow you to specify, you know, the source and the destination and the action that should be performed on that particular traffic. So um, we'll see that come up in just a second. So you can type in the name right here, give it a priority. It gives you a little handy list of, of you know, what existing rules there are so you can figure out the relative priority, direction, whether allow or deny, type of protocol. Then you can select you know, what the source is. It could be an existing server that already exists and destination, etc. cetera. Uh, click Save and that will add the connection right away. Another thing you can manage here are public IP addresses. You can either you know, add an IP that uh, could be associated with a server that doesn't currently have a public IP address. You can associate and disassociate existing static IP addresses in just, just an easy way of, of managing uh, that functionality of Azure. Okay, so you can see here we can assign it to a machine that doesn't currently have that. All right, so now that we looked at, uh, at some user and server management, let's look at some of the uh, auto scaling and RDS functionality. So one really neat feature of, of using Nerdio for Azure is this RDS collection functionality, which uses the traditional RDS collection methodology, but integrates it with Azure's scale sets and allows the environment to scale dynamically out uh, based on you know CPU utilization, and then allows it to scale back in based on you know reduced CPU load. So for for example, if you wanted to add a collection, click Add Collection, uh, give it a name, select a an existing RDS session host as a template, which could be customized with applications, uh, could have a certain instance size, which can be changed later, and then you get a new collection created. And if you look at the auto scale settings in that collection, there, there are three parameters here. You know, one is the boundaries. You know, what's the minimum number of hosts you want to have in that collection and what is the maximum? It's always recommended to set some maximum to avoid some runaway application causing you know, this to scale out to infinity and, and cost a lot of money. Definitely something that should be avoided. Then the next thing is scaling logic. Basically says add a host if CPU uh, usage across all existing hosts in the collection exceeds a certain percentage, 70 in this case for 10 minutes, and then remove a host once CPU utilization drops below 40 
for 20 minutes or more, but only do that after business hours, which is either 6 p.m. or you can specify to do that at any time. And you can also have a, a message that goes to the users who happen to be on the host that's being scaled in, letting them know that they can just log off and log back in right away to be placed on another host. Uh, we also have functionality that will randomly send a message to a percentage of the users when a new host is added to the collection so they can log off and log back on and, and be placed on a new host if, if performance uh, is something that, that's a problem for them. Uh, you could also resize the template so you can have the, the compute template be any, you know, any VM size and it will automatically make that change across the collection. And you can also change the size of the system partition and either make it an SSD or a spinning media as well. So that is RDS collections. If you wanted to, you can assign users to individual session hosts as well. And the way you would do that is by, you know, there's going to be an RDS session host to start with. You can then go in and clone that session host and that will create obviously a clone of it that you can use to assign to users on an individual basis if you do not want to have collections that have multiple session hosts built into them. The golden image management for VDI is, is very straightforward. You click on start, that boots up the VM. You can then generate an RDP file, log into it, make the necessary changes, come in here and stop it. And then any users created with VDI desktops will have a desktop with uh, those settings assigned. Another auto scale capability I want to point out uh, is what we call desktop auto scale. This uses the concept of work hour profiles, the three default profiles that come out of the box that can be modified. One is called workaholic for users that work 24 by 7. One is called productivity, which is 12 by 7. And then another one that's called work life balance, which by default is 5 or 9 by 5 uh, profile. And what you can do is you can come in here and you can specify, first of all, the, the hours, but also who, what users belong to which profile. And what this will do is it will automatically calculate an action plan for each and every desktop resource in the environment. Uh, and if it's a VDI desktop, it will shut it down outside of that user's work hours and then power it back on automatically uh, right before business hours. And if you want to give them the ability to power it on, if they try to log in outside of their normal hours, you can do that. But it will also go through and it will calculate the optimal sizing of any session hosts that may exist in the environment on a day-to-day -day and hour-by-hour -hour basis. So it will you know, figure out that if you have, let's say, you know, 100 users running on a session host with, uh, you know, let's say, eight cores, and then after hours you're only expecting 25 users to be using the system, then it's going to downsize that VM to a two-core VM instead of an eight-core VM, and then automatically upsize it after hours to be a an eight core VM like it's supposed you know like it was set as a baseline. So here is what that action plan uh, will look like, and then you can you can customize what actually happens in each and every transition point. So you can see here you know on Monday we're expecting two users uh, during you know seven to six, but not outside of those hours, etc. And then you can click on on these little transition points and decide whether you want the nap to automate the sizing or you can select your own sizing, you can tell it don't change anything, power it off or resize it to some particular size. So this is really convenient because as users get added into the system, if they get assigned to dedicated session hosts or dedicated virtual desktops, this will automatically manage the availability of those resources and optimize um, the savings. So if you look at estimated savings as a result of having you know, the four users in this collection, you can see that you know it will it will save about 50% of the compute uh, resources by having those four users in the work-life balance profile. Okay, there's uh, you know lots of additional functionality, lots of uh, onboarding tools to help with the onboarding process. The one thing that that commonly is asked is is how do you integrate this into an existing environment, and and that's something that's uh, that's usually you know, a very important component of the onboarding process. So normally, a, a clean new environment gets deployed for a pilot. So a customer can go in and test the environment and make sure the performance is acceptable and, and maybe you know, pilot some applications just to get a comfort level that, that everything works as expected. 
And then what happens is you have the ability to plug this into an existing Active Directory over a VPN connection. It will then extend that Active Directory into Azure by creating a domain controller within this deployment. And then the Nerdio admin portal will have visibility of the user and computer objects inside of the existing Active Directory. So when you add users or when you, you know, assign desktops to existing users, they will maintain their existing usernames, their existing email addresses, existing passwords, and you can manage them from the Nerdio admin portal, manage their desktops without having to recreate those user objects. The way that is done is through a process we call hybrid AD, really straightforward. You know, there are about, uh, there are three steps to it. First thing is you add a domain trust by specifying an IP address of an existing domain controller across a VPN that, that you would configure right here. You give it authentication information and test the connection. It will run through a set of validations to make sure you can reach the machine, can authenticate, it has the right functional level in, in, in Active Directory. It is able to reach a DNS server that is hosting that Active Directory DNS zone, etc. Then you can select the name of the domain from the dropdown and specify the name of the new domain controller that will be created in this environment. Click Save. After about an hour, this VM will be created. It's going to have a full Active Directory extension set up on it. It's going to have all the sites and services properly configured with the right subnets, and it will be listed as one of the servers under the server module. Once that is done, you then convert this uh, trusted domain to what we call a NAP managed domain. And when you do that, NAP becomes aware of those objects that live in the on-prem Active Directory and they can be managed from right here. So that's one scenario. That's when you're extending an existing Active Directory that you don't want necessarily to abandon. Uh, you just want to extend it or you want to migrate into this environment. Two other scenarios are when you have a customer that's only using Azure AD, for example, through Office 365, and you want to manage those users in Nerdio and assign desktops to them. If that's the case, these users will appear down in this section. You'll be able to select uh, you know, one or more users and import them. This is going to move them up into this section where you'll be able to manage them fully, just like we've seen, assign them to desktops, etc. And then the third scenario is what we call a greenfield deployment. That's when you want to abandon your existing Active Directory. Typically, that's something that's that's seen in smaller environments that may not be you know clean or may have had you know many versions of of upgrades for many years, and and you know you may want to start fresh. In that case, what you can do is you can export the Active Directory users and groups information from an existing Active Directory that's a domain controller that's across a VPN connection and then use the bulk import functionality in Nerdio in order to bring those accounts in. So this, this basically will uh, give you a template that is going to be a CSV file that lets you control all the aspects of the user. So everything we've seen on the user module where we add the user can be controlled here, obviously name, display name, email address, Office 365 licensing, even password password all the way down to group membership and even desktop assignment and disk sizes can be managed from a CSV file so you can manage this all in bulk, submit it as a job into the NAP and it will go through it and process it and, and perform all of these actions for you. So if you're starting in a greenfield environment, you don't have to do this you know, kind of from a from a, a GUI standpoint, one click at a time. So that um, you know, that is a high level overview and and a bit of a demo of the Nerdio for Azure product. Again, it it helps simplify the process of provisioning, managing, and cost optimizing the environment. One thing that I all want to point out towards the end is our cost estimator. Our cost estimator allows you to provide some high level business information as opposed to actually architecting the environment. It will then architect an Azure deployment, uh, including RDS if appropriate, including any line of business servers and provide you a per user per month price. So let's go through this as an example. So let's imagine we have a customer that's gonna be using 50 virtual desktops. You know, maybe you know, none of them will be VDI, none of them need GPU capabilities. And, and there are little tooltips next to each of these fields that, that tells you exactly what this is. The next section is servers. 
First question is, okay, how much storage space will be required in aggregate for shared files and databases? So let's say we're gonna need a terabyte. Let's go ahead and select that. Will there be any application or database databases that require dedicated servers? Let's say yes, we're gonna have you know an app server and we're gonna have a database server. Let's say the app server is gonna be a two core, uh, seven gig of RAM uh, VM, and it's going to have an SSD uh, disk and it's going to have a no uh, OS disk and no data disk and let's add another server let's call it this is going to be our uh, database server and it's going to be a four core let's say four core VM with SSD C drive and also a 256 gigabyte data drive okay so that's uh, that's all we need to do for servers then it asks you all right do you want to provide office 365 e3 as part of this product offering to your customer if they already have it you would leave this at zero if you're going to be reselling it to them this allows you to easily create a, a, a budget or cost estimate across not just Azure, but also Office 365 and, and uh, RDS licensing, which is the next question. You can either provide RDS licensing under a SPLA agreement uh, that you hold with Microsoft, or you can rely on the customer's existing RDS uh, licensing as long as they have current software assurance. Section four uh, goes through a few assumptions. Like for example, Azure hybrid usage benefit has an impact on the cost. So you can say, you know, if the customer already has Windows Server licensing under SA, you can say yes. That will not only show you what the impact is on Azure, which is pretty significant. You can see it went from 806 um, down to uh, 528, but it will also calculate how many cores under SA you need to have. So really handy um, on how that works. You can decide if auto scaling is on or off. You can decide whether you want to include uh, backup in this uh, estimate. And then this is really handy. You can see what the reserved instances impact is going to be. So for instance, with a three year reserved instance and all the VMs, you're going to be at 528 for the Azure and at no, at, at pay as you go pricing, it's going to be almost double. So that's obviously makes a big difference. So let's leave it at three. You can select whether you're gonna do other region DR or not. A few other selections are available here. And then finally, this section lets you specify your own cost assumptions. We have some defaults in here that we found to be the case. For example, a typical RDP connection consumes between a dollar and three dollars in bandwidth on a monthly basis per user. So, you know, the assumption is gonna be 150. If you're using non-premium storage, then you're gonna be paying for transactions. So that, that's the estimated per user amount for transactions. Here you can specify your users to core density. So if you have you know, non-CPU uh, hungry applications, it may be five. If you have CPU hungry applications, it may be three. And this will use this information to actually architect the environment. You can specify what type of desktops are going to be provided to users as their uh, VDI VMs. You can then specify your Azure CSP and Office 365 discount, select the region, select the currency, and click view costs. What's really nice here is that it summarizes this information for you, rolls it all up into a per user per month price, but at the same time breaks it down by component. It tells you what the Azure piece is, Office 365, RDS, how many server cores, what the Nerdio license is, the total cost, and then it even shows you what the architecture is gonna look like. So there's gonna be a domain controller size like this with this kind of OS disk. There's going to be a file server. Remember this application and database servers are on here. There are gonna be two RDS session hosts with a total of 17 cores. And then it will show you, hey, you're gonna be paying about $193 per month in desktop compute. You're going to be paying 115 in server compute, 278 in server storage, 75 in bandwidth etc you get the idea and this rolls it up into this kind of a nice looking format you can give this a name and then uh, print it out as a PDF uh, to have as a representation of your cost you can then take this cost number add your margin in for example double it to add a 50% margin and you know go to a customer with a quote of $50 per user for this particular environment so again really simplifies the costing process and, and makes it easier for you to build solutions on top of Azure. And then the final thing I wanna mention uh, for our DCO participants, 
So those of you that are in the Microsoft Data Center Optimization Program, we have a special offer for uh, DCO partners. And the special offer is uh, 500 free Nerdio for Azure licenses for the duration of the DCO 12 month engagement. It is a $72,000 value, if you look at it uh, from that perspective. And also an important thing to keep in mind is the, the pricing model for Nerdio is a desktop pricing model. So if there are no virtual desktops involved in the deployment, then all of the functionality you've seen is available to you for free forever. There is going to be no licensing cost and you'll be able to you know, build servers and manage them and auto scale them and back things up and do all of that very inexpensively, as a matter of fact, free from a nerdier perspective. All right, I appreciate everyone's uh, taking the time today to learn more about Nerdio for Azure and have a great day. Yeah.